Good morning, friends, and welcome to this our Good Friday service. Would you join me in prayer? Jesus, come and be our teacher. Come and inspire us by your love to be people of faith. Come and deepen within us a trust and confidence in you that we can hope in your promises. For we pray this in your beautiful name. Amen. Today we have heard of this moment of Jesus on the cross. And it's a peculiar day where we reflect and remember. This is a peculiar day called Good Friday. And yet on this day, the Prince of Peace, the Lord of Love, is nailed to a cross, stripped naked, beaten. Nails driven into his feet and into his hands and blood pouring from his, his face. How could this be Good Friday? On this day, it seems rather that violence and anger and sin and evil win. But today, I'd want to suggest to you that rather than sin and evil winning, today we discover that love wins, that we see and discover that today God judges sin, God defeats evil, and God is at work for the redemption of God's people. Just as God has always been at work. For the simple Ruth, the truth is that the still point of God, the defining characteristic of God, the immovable rock within God, is that God is a God of love. And so however we understand God at work in the world, we need to understand it, interpret it in such a way that it aligns and, and, and brings us closer to the still point of God being a God of love. For many of us, we maybe grew up with a sense of Jesus as, as a God of mercy, but God is a God of wrath. God this Father. And so on the cross we see that Jesus pays this price. Jesus acts in a merciful way to appease the wrath and anger of God. But does that understanding of God as a God of wrath being appeased by the murdering of Jesus align with that still point of God's love? Does it align with scripture and, and the understanding of God that God births through this telling of God's story in the Old and New Testament? Can I rather suggest to you that, that we need to come to a deeper understanding of God's wrath that aligns to that still point of God's love? So how do we understand God's wrath? I'd want to suggest to you that God's wrath is not a universal characteristic of God. It's not some defining characteristic of God. No, rather love is. And yet there are moments where God's wrath flows out of God because of God's love. The best way I can understand it is to understand that God's love means that God, God always acts and wills for the good of God's people. It's almost as if God has God's hand around God's people and is seeking to sustain and encourage and love and affirm and support them. The struggle, of course, is just like some children when we are trying to do that. Sometimes they push our hand away. They push away love and reject it, rebel against it. And in those moments, we see how as love is driven away, forced apart, somehow sin and evil and violence takes control of one's life. And when sin and evil takes hold of one, it's the nature of sin and evil to self-destruct. I don't know if you've noticed that, but simply allow a child to grow up believing that they're the center of the universe. Allow a business to operate with only one, one value, profit. Allow a government to begin to believe that it's more important then it's people. Allow an individual to practice selfish self-interest and you will notice how sin destroys. How it destroys relationships and character. How it destroys society and community. For it's the nature of sin and evil to self-destruct. And when God says, I will remove my protective hand, sin destroys itself. It would be easy to begin to believe that at that moment, God's wrath, God is angry and full of anger. But, but scripture does not record that. Rather, we learn and we understand that when, when God sees people rejecting God and sees that hand of love being pushed away, God grieves and God weeps. In Hosea, Hosea tells the account of God's people who again and again are rejecting God's love, running after false gods and, and, and bringing havoc upon their society. And when God thinks of removing God's hand, these are the words that the prophet refers to. How can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I hand you over, Israel? My heart is changed within me 
all my compassion is aroused. You see, at that moment where we think God has abandoned us and let us away, it's at that moment that God is at work seeking salvation and renewal. While God may give the people up to the fix of their sinfulness, God does not finally give up on them. God's judgment is always in the servant of the ultimate will of God to serve. That's what Terence Fretham has to say. That God does not finally give up on them. That when God removes that God's hand, it's simply to allow sin to self-destruct before God seeks to come in again and support and sustain and encourage us. And so grief is what God experiences in judgment and what wrath always looks like for God. And so if we think of that today, Jesus on the cross, it seems that the wrath of God has come near to the life of Jesus. But rather, can you think of this, that God has entered into the human experience, has come down to earth, handed God's self over, let go of all God's power and authority, and entered into the human experience. And from the moment God entered into the human experience, evil has been conspiring to kill, to murder, to defeat this love. We see that from the very moment of Jesus' birth, when the powers seek to murder this child that is heard of, to this moment where Jesus is taken to the cross and nailed. We hear of it when we see and, and discover that around the table, as Jesus is washing his disciples' feet, it's at that moment that Satan enters into Judas's heart, and the forces of evil conspire with a broken human character to bring about what seems to be the defeat of love. And yet the God does something amazing and so surprising. For in this moment, the still point of God's love is still true. For as Jesus walks to the cross, it is as if God hands God's self over to evil. And God enters into that human experience fully to absorb all that evil, all that pain, all that suffering. God removes God's hand from Jesus as they had planned. And in that moment, Jesus experiences that aloneness. In the Garden of Gethsemane, his grief is so real that he weeps and his tears become as if blood. He speaks from the cross and says, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? For God's protected hand is removed. He has been delivered, handed over to the forces of power of, and the powers of evil. What does this mean then? Does this mean that evil wins? No. For in this moment, the mystery is truly revealed in a way that evil could never understand and anticipate. For evil could not see that its own way self-destruct. That when Jesus was handed over, the winning move was played. The final blow was struck. For God in, in Jesus absorbs all of our brokenness, all of our sin and our evil, and yet does not forsake love. Jesus remains faithful to the end. And he becomes our faithfulness. So on the cross, we see love and sin meeting each other. We discover that in that moment, a cross is raised up and our Savior is crucified. And the judgment Jesus endured was not a matter of setting God right by allowing God to rend, vent God's rage against Jesus. But rather it's a matter of God setting the world right. By overcoming sin and evil with God's self-sacrificial love. God was outsmarting and outmaneuvering the rulers of the age. To leave them defeated and discomforted on the cosmic battlefield. Love laid a trap and as it were it deployed humility and unselfishness against power and pride. A mismatch so stupendous that the outcome seemed a foregone conclusion until the rulers of this age were able to see their scheme disintegrate. You see in this moment it seems that violence and power and pride and hate win. But rather we discover that in this moment all of that is absorbed into the life and death of Jesus. But it's overcome in the resurrection. And so today is Good Friday. 
Today is Good Friday, for God's wrath has been revealed. God has removed God's hand from Jesus, and Jesus has absorbed all of our brokenness and overcome it. And now there is the most beautiful of possibilities that God can reach back into humanity and again hold us in God's hand. For as the letter of Hebrews says, God's salvation has worked and we are connected against to God. Our sin has been forgotten and we are redeemed and forgiven. And now that sin and evil has been overcome within us and we can be released to the power of love and the freedom to love. And so today, could you, would you believe that on the cross, the winning move has been played and sin and evil has been defeated and love wins. Could you begin to believe that in the darkest of hours, God's best work is done for God stretches in that moment and sustains and brings a resurrection when it seems like it is only death and brokenness and defeat. Could you believe even today as we've heard news that this lockdown has extended that in this darkness, God is doing God's best work. And God's saving actions are powerfully at work in this land, in this world. And in this moment of darkness, where it seems that the brokenness and sin and evil of disease and isolation and despair is at work, God is busy at work bringing healing and love. And we have the possibility to do our best work with God in this moment. Our best work of following our Savior and learning His ways. Our best work of trusting the truth of the cross. That in this moment, love wins. Would you, could you believe today that love wins? Would you pray with me? Oh God, we thank you for the incredible gift of the cross. That in this moment, you absorb all of the sin and brokenness that should have been ours. That should have been ours when we removed your hand from us. But instead, you choose to absorb it on yourself, to take it upon yourself in the life and death and resurrection of Jesus. And in this moment where it seems that sin wins, we discover that love wins. Allow us today to receive your forgiveness. Allow us today to forgive, receive your hope. Allow us today to receive your faith. Allow us today to receive your love. We pray this in the strong and beautiful name of Jesus. Amen.